Hello everyone, please make sure you have Lesson 10, page 45 in front of you. Uh, this is the beginning, so please copy what you see. Uh, in this example, we see that it says find x, and we know that there are 180 degrees in the triangle, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 32 plus 38 to get 70, and I'm going to do 180 minus 70 to get 110, and then I can fill in this angle as 110 right here. And then I happen to know that because these two angles are in fact supplementary, that those two would add up to 180, so this in fact should be 70. One of the things that I want you to notice in this case is that the exterior angle, in this case this part here, the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. So this 70 is equal to the 32 plus the 78. I'll fill it in a little darker. So, moving on, uh, let's take a look. Um, fill in fact discovery. This first one, the sum of a right triangle, the angle sum. So if I was to make a right triangle, and this is typically what it looks like, and we had a right angle right here, let's just say for conversation's sake that one of the angles is in fact 40. So if that one is 40, we happen to know that the other one, in this case here, is 50 degrees. So in a right triangle, the acute angles are always complementary. Uh, the next one, the exterior angle is always equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. So I'm going to fill this in like this. Uh, if I wrote that this was 50, and I knew that this was 110, then I would happen to know that the angle up here would in fact be 60. So the exterior angle is always equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. So again, if I took these two and added them up, I would get that angle there. Uh, the next thing, the base angles of an isosceles triangle are always congruent. So an isosceles triangle looks more like this. Remember those tick marks will be there. So if I happen to know that this angle up here is 20, and I also know that these two angles are equal, then I could do 180 minus 20 to get 160, and I would take 160 and divide by 2 to get each angle measure to be 80. Again, the two base angles would be 80, and the vertex angle, by the way, this is called the vertex angle, would be equal to 20 in this case. And then the last thing we've discussed in class, but just to be sure, the sides of an equilateral triangle are always congruent, and the angles are always equal. So the angles would be 60 degrees, and the sides would be congruent. Okay, let's take a look at some questions. On the next page, we're going to deal with questions numbers 1 and 2 to start. So in this case, we do know that this triangle is in fact isosceles because of the tick marks. Uh, and if you look here real carefully, we are certainly talking about um, these tick marks here. So that piece and that piece are equal, so we know it's isosceles. Now if it is isosceles, then we also know that the base angles are congruent. So this angle and this angle must be equal. So now we know that that's 75. And to find angle 1, we're going to do 75 plus 75 equals 150. And then I could do 180 minus 150 to get 30. So the vertex angle is, in fact, 30 degrees. Angle 1 equals 30 degrees. In the second example, it's slightly different. We happen to know that this is an isosceles triangle also. So we know the base angles are congruent. And we have 180 degrees to split up. So in this case, I'm going to do 180 minus 70, which is 110. And then I'm going to do 110 divided by 2 to get 55. So I know the two base angles are 55, and the vertex angle is 70. Uh, moving on to the next two. So in question three, uh, this is dealing with the exterior angle theorem. There's two ways to figure this one out. Option A is to know that in a triangle we have 180 degrees, and the 80 and the 40 have eaten up 120 of them. 
So I could do 180 minus 120, which is 60. So then I know that this angle is 60. And then angle 3 is supplementary with angle 60. So I could mark that as equal to 120. The shorter version of that same thing, choice B, would just to be knowing that in this case, the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. So all I'd have to do is add 80 plus 40 to get 120. So I could do 80 plus 40 equals 120. Same answer, just a little bit shorter. Now, in the next example, we're looking at a right angle here. So we know that that's 90. And in this case, I'm going to use the exterior angle theorem. So I would know that 115 is equal to 90 plus angle 4. So all I would do is 115 minus 90, and I would get the correct answer of 25 degrees. Now, just to confirm that if this was 25 degrees, then I could figure out what this angle is here based on the fact that in a right triangle, the two acute angles are always complementary. That would make this 65, because I could do 90 minus 25 to get 65. And I could also confirm that these two angles add up to 180, just like they're supposed to, because they're angles on a line. Okay, two more examples. In this case, we have uh, an isosceles triangle. Again, I know that because we have the two tick marks, so I know that it's isosceles. If this is 68, then I happen to know that this angle is in fact 68 also. In order to get angle six, I'm gonna take 68 plus 68, which in this case is 136, and I would do 180 minus 136, which is equal to 44. So this is 44 degrees. And then the angle on the outside of the triangle, angle seven, is gonna be equal to 180 minus 44, which is 136. And another way to get that same angle, angle seven, would be equal to 68 plus 68 based on the exterior angle theorem. So it's still 136 degrees. And then the last example, number six. So in this case, I happen to know that the large triangle, the one on the outside, is in fact a right triangle based on the fact that they gave me a right angle up here. So I do know that the two acute angles, in this case, I'm looking at this 64 and this eight should in fact be complementary. So if I was to know that, then I could get angle eight is equal to 90 minus 64, which in this case is going to be 26 degrees. So now I have 26 degrees right there. Now, moving right along to uh, get the next one, I do know that these two angles are in fact supplementary, the 95 with the one next to it, because those are angles on a line. So I can easily figure out that 180 minus 95 is equal to 85. So I know that this angle is 85. And then looking at the right triangle, I could probably figure out that in a, in a triangle on the right-hand side, those three angles need to add up to 180. So what I'm going to do is 85 plus 64 is equal to 149, and 180 minus 149 is equal to 31. So I now know that that angle is in fact 31. Just to double check some things, I do have a right angle on the top. So if I was to do 90 minus 31, I would get 59. So I know that this angle is 59. And then if I wanted to double check, I could, in fact, look at the left triangle, in this case, this one, and double check that the angles there all add up to 180. So 26 plus 95 
plus 59 equal 180, and then I know that I did it correct. Thanks, and I'll see you later.